Hello, my name is Clive Scott. This is um, part three of a course called Technical Lectures on Java and um, it's just a quick look at classes. Object-oriented programming is the, uh, it's the way that programming is done these days. Um, in fact, it's been like that for quite a while actually. And um, classes, they're an they're a integral part of this uh, object-oriented programming stuff and uh, and uh, right, there's quite a lot of other things to cover as well down here now. The problem is that um, there's such an enormous amount to cover and uh, it's so interrelated with other bits that uh, to keep these uh, these uh, courses down to under an hour I've, uh, I've uh, left some things out so that I'll come to them uh, later. So I've called this a, a first look because uh, we will come back to it and do it in a, quite a lot more detail later on. But uh, and that's what I'm going to cover anyway. Um, an, an object is um, basically the way that you model the real world in, in software. And um, uh, these objects, they tend to be sort of nouns in that they're characterized by um, um, things like uh, the state of it, uh, the sort of attributes that it's got, um, how it behaves, what, it, what it's capable of doing, and um, the actual identity of the object itself. As I say, they tend to be nouns. Um, and it's best to make it a bit clearer with an example. And uh, here's an example. Uh, if you imagine um, you've got a car hire system, and um, and within it you might have objects called um, car hire agreements. Typically, you'd have more than one of them if you're got more than one car or more than one hire agreement. And uh, uh, the sort of thing that the car hire agreement would contain would be things like um, uh, the car, that's a part of the state, uh, the customer who's, who's being hired to, um, perhaps any payment details and the start and end dates of the hire period and well I'm sure you can think of other things. And um, as for behaviour, um, what you might want to be able to do is to say um, the customer might sort of phone up and want to change the end date for extended or something, you, you might want to be able to do that. And um, uh, you might want to calculate uh, the charge and uh, bill the customer and that sort of thing. And in the same sort of system you might have um, uh, objects called cars in the same uh, car hire system and the sort of things that it would contain would be details about the car. So it's um, mileage for instance, uh, uh, the model, the license plate number, whether it's available for hire, any hire agreement that's, out, that's um, existing on it at the moment. Uh, that's if it is hired out. Uh, um, what sort of behaviour you might you want? Uh, you might want a, the ability to hire the car out um, uh, to update its mileage when it's returned, for example. And um, if the mileage is uh, is uh, high enough, you may want to mark it as not available for hire and send it off for uh, servicing and things like that. And as you can see, um, uh, this object here, cars, might have a, a, some sort of entity um, car hire agreement in it, which is one of these up here. So you can see there may be a sort of pointer or something between them. Uh, that's the sort of thing. Uh, I'll, I'll give you another example to make it a bit clearer as well. Here's a couple more uh, examples. Um, uh, if you imagine that you're an airline and you've got uh, an airline system of some sort, um, and uh, you might, for example, model flights. Uh, for a particular flight, it'll have a flight number, of course, and um, a plane allocated to that flight uh, with a crew allocated as well and arrival and departure times. Those will be typical state information and what you might want to be able to do with it is to select um, select a crew for it, uh, uh, select a particular plane out of all the planes you've got and uh, change the departure times for example and uh, lose the baggage probably as well, uh, that sort of thing. <laughs> uh, anyway uh, also, uh, you might also, have, for instance, have a flight reservation system so that uh, passengers can phone up and reserve flights, or reserve seats on flights, I should say. And uh, there, you might have a uh, passenger details, the um, uh, flight number, of course, the seat number you might want to allocate to the passenger, and uh, baggage details and that sort of thing. And uh, what you might want to do is to uh, have a facility to book the, a flight, sort of. Passengers can be booked in, um, allocate seats and so on, and check baggage, that sort of thing. And uh, 
generally um, one of the big ideas behind uh, object oriented programming is that um, you sort of um, you have these objects and you separate their state and behavior and um, uh, the state of a, an object should be hidden from the rest of the system because the only thing um, that should be of interest to the rest of the system is um, is its behavior the, the behavior of the object so what you've done is um, by hiding the internal state of the of the object you're uh, keeping any problems like uh, that occur within that object itself so it makes debugging it and uh, uh, getting it working a lot easier uh, what you really have is a kind of a, like um, a black box with uh, anything that's specified would be its behavior so as long as it conforms to the particular behavior to the outside world it's the same what goes on inside is, is not relevant and that's kind of isolated uh, isolated it from the um, rest of the system and it makes it easier to write it and easier to de debug it and uh, as we've seen a minute that's what um, classes help you to do